Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are f continuing on with us VGC Series 10 content, if I can get my words out. And uh, we have another rental team to feature today from you fine viewers. And again, just a little reminder, if you do have a rental card that you'd like to see featured on the channel before we end up Series 10, do drop it down in the comment section below, drop me a DM on Twitter or somewhere like Discord or probably the best places to get me. But today's team is from Andrew Pugh. Uh, so thank you so much. I hope I'm pronouncing your surname right, Andrew. But uh, thank you so much for providing the team here. Obviously, his online handle is Pug. And uh, the team is based all around Ice Rider Carex, which is very exciting, a really nice Pokemon. Uh, one that's one of my favorites uh, to use in Series 10, um, but one that has a really tough time in the format with a lot of the big kind of threats that are kicking around. But if you can get it set up in a trick room and get that Glacial Lance kind of firing, then the the kind of the, the momentum shift that you can get with this Pokemon is ridiculous. You see he's opted for the Psychic Seed here to kind of pair nicely with the Ndidi, which allows that kind of seamless trick room setup with Follow Me support as well and then you get that special defense buff on top of that with the seed which is always really nice. Lorantis is a really nice Pokemon to bring in here really thrives in a trick room environment and has that contrary ability so anytime Intimidate is pulled onto the field you've got Lorantis out it gives you a plus one instead of a minus one which is really nice way of punishing things like Incineroar in particular and with things like Super Power Knight slash Leaf's Life to get a bit of recovery back and then taking advantage of Leaf Blade as well it's a really nice Pokemon in general Role. Then you got Jellicent, going to be another Trick Room setter as well. Gives you nice switching, something like Zashin, going to be able to kind of take those Behemoth Blades a lot better and punish with things like Saps, uh, Strength Sap, which is always a really nice move to lower the, the target's attack stat as well as recover some health. Uh, Mental Herb there as well, a nice option to uh, just to be able to get around things like Taunt, which can stop the Trick Room. And it's going to be predominantly another Trick Room setter along with the Stack Attacker as well. So three Trick Room setters on this team. Lots of options to make sure you get your Trick room up and it's going to be a big priority for this team and then rounding off with the incineral there with the safety goggles gives you a little bit of immunity from things like amoongus that can uh, slow you down a little bit to say the least but with Incineroar and Lorantis even if the trick room's up you've got some nice options there to be able to kind of get rid of Amoongus before you kind of unleash the other Pokemon on your team but there is the rental card we'll have a couple of games of the team now and then we'll jump over to the rental at the end of the episode just to remind you if you want to try it out for yourself so without further ado friends let's get into game one of today's episode okay first up today we have a Zashin Manchow Nilego Rillaboom Regilecki and Incineroar. I just take a little bit of a sigh there because I'm like, oh, there's lots of stuff on this team that gives Ice Rider Calyrex a really hard time. Uh, obviously, the top three do, and uh, also the bottom one in Incineroar. It's actually a really hard matchup for Ice Rider Calyrex in particular, but the one thing you could say about my opponent's team is if we can get the Trick Room up, we're in a good spot against it because there isn't a lot on my opponent's team that's going to be that offensive in a Trick Room environment, and we can really kind of punish a lot of things on the team if we get into the right Right position of course. I think Jellison probably indeed he's not a bad option for us. I do like Lorantis in this match as well. It kind of punishes the Incineral. Then I think Calyrex as well as our last one. Okay, let's lock in. We're gonna do it. Ideally what we want to do is get the trick room up and then get something like Glastria and then Lorantis out next to each other. And I think that really kind of makes it very difficult for my opponent to kind of neuter um Calyrex and then, you know, with the with the, the contrary ability kind of next to it. So you're gonna see Nailigo, Nailigo, and Zashin come out. We've got to worry on the Nailigo as well, at also having trick room, so they could trick room on our trick room um, to just reverse it, which wouldn't be ideal. Um, we could play into this. We could really play into this and just go sap strength into the Zashin here. Or we could just go for a trick room. We could just go for a trick room. Uh, or we could just go water spout and follow me. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted just to do that, to be honest. It's just if we do that, I think we have to go trick room. It's just if we do that, then it's just. We kind of are stuck for getting our trick room up the next turn. That's the only thing. So I would think the Nile will probably okay, they're switching out. Just fine. Cinema coming in. Also super fine. 
There's actually a mind substitute here though, that's the thing. If it does, it makes it a little bit more tricky to deal with, of course. We do have the water spout that we'll be able to fire off the next turn. Depending on what the Zashin does, it might open the door for us to bring in Calyrex, really. There's a substitute. Okay. We do have that follow me, so we've got a pretty easy way to just fire off water spout, water spout, water spout, and just keep that pressure on with Jellicent now. Yeah, I think we just water spout and uh, yeah, we just go for the redirect because we want to try. I like the water spout's not going to be enough to take Incineroar down. Um, what are they going to do? Going to throat chop or snarl? They could snarl here. That's definitely an option. You can see from the Incineroar, Zashin could protect. Snarl probably a, a good way to kind of slot our side of things down. But I don't know what the Zashian is going to, it probably goes, does it, yeah, it's just protecting, yeah, okay. Kind of want to see the Incineroar go for something like Throw Chop, because Snarl makes it a little more difficult to deal with. And it makes the Follow Me a little bit, um, not the best option. Let's see how much this does to Incineroar, it'd be nice if we could take it down, I don't think it's got the power to though, no. Okay, proccing a citrus berry. Throw a chop. Okay, that's ideal. No snow. Okay. Have we got a helping hand? We could go water spout. Mm. Expanding force isn't going to be enough. Um. But we just want to be able to get rid of the, the sub on the Zashin. I think we just follow me again because then the Incineroar is kind of forced to go the Throat Chop route, which will go into Ndidi. Uh, Zashin will be able to attack into Jellicent, but we get rid of the substitute unless they go for it again. Okay, Didi going to be able to hang around another day. What comes in now, though, that's the interesting thing. Because we've only seen the, the Nihiligo, right? So if the Nihiligo comes in, on this slot, it's going to take so much damage. Inchow. Okay. Oh, that's good for us. That's really good for us. Get rid of this sub on the Zashin. And do some fat damage to that Moonshell. As the sub fades. And then we're going to see Behemoth Blade. Okay, that's perfect. Now we get Glastra onto the field. They can't go for... Yeah, they can't, they actually cannot go for the fake out with the Psychic Train active. Um, the other thing is we could potentially bring in Lorantis, but I don't think we got enough firepower between Lorant, like Leaf Blade's not going to be enough to get this Ash in. And we're probably better off getting Calyrex onto the field now while we got the opportunity to. We need to keep an eye on these Trick Room turns as well, because we could potentially play that double Trick Room turn, like make that double trick room play if we want got to worry about wide guard as well here that's the other thing from the uh mean Xiao, that you need to be like super super conscious of like the wide guard is going to be very difficult for us to deal with how many turns of trick room two left okay okay i think we want a spout and i think we just high horsepower to be honest because they may wide guard but if they wide guard then Inchao's not really doing anything. I would imagine maybe Incineroar to come in on the Minshao slot just to get the Intimidate onto the Glastria, which kind of makes me feel like is it a better idea to switch in Lorantis here and then just Water Spout? Um, but we'll see. Okay, no, no, we're going to be able to just clear the field. We've decided that that is... That is the option. Okay. Well... That's a little bit surprising. 
I think the cycle train's got one more turn left, so we just glacier lance and water spout and that's it. And Jellicent's kind of dictated this the whole pace of this game. I mean the Indeedy support with the the terrain is obviously huge for us. But they don't really feel like there's a way out. I mean, this is where we could potentially go uh, trick room, trick room, but at the same time, the fake out. Uh, sorry, the. Yeah, I mean, they may protect Nile Go. It's just the Incineroar complicates things a little bit because it can throw a chop into, into one of our Pokemon. Whereas if we can just, just double into it now and just get rid of it, like the Glacial Lance will put it in range for a water spout. And then the Nile Go is going to be hard pushed to kind of. Take down the Jellicent, you know, the next turn. Because I think you've got to target into Glastria. Uh, Calyrex. I keep calling it Glastria. It's not Glastria. Okay. Well, that makes a little more sense. Especially as the Incineroar under speeds. Okay. Now the trick room's ended. Uh, this becomes a little bit more tricky. Now, the, the thing that we could potentially do is just trick room with Jellicent and trick room with Carax. But the problem is, um, actually, we probably don't want a trick room. I think what we're probably better off doing is going for sap strength into Incineroar and just protect Calyrex. Because I think the Nihiligo attacks into uh, the Calyrex here. Probably goes Meteor Beam, right? And we know we're going to outspeed the Incineral with, yeah, we know we're going to outspeed the Incineral with Jellicent. So we get the Sap Strength off, get our health back, they're going to throw a chop again. Oh god, they're going after, they're going after the Jellicent, they made the better play. No! They made it, okay, that's not ideal. Um, okay. And the beast boost. Now we're, we're in trouble. Now we're in trouble. So they're gonna go through. Oh, they go flare blitz. Okay. Yeah. Now we need a double protect. I mean, Lorantis does have the assault vest, but it, is it gonna be able to take a sludge bomb? I don't think so. So we need like a double protect. I mean, do they have power gem? Because they're gonna have to have power gem, right? They have to have power gem. We need the trick room. We need the trick room desperately, though. That's that's what we need. Yeah, let's go super power into Nilego. And let's go trick room. And hope they haven't got power gem, which they blatantly have. Yeah. This will take us down. Oh, actually, we've got the uh, psychic seed boost. So I forget about that. Unless they've doubled into Calyrex, then we're all right. Yeah, okay. Now that Incineroar goes down, now we just win this with high horsepower. Yeah. Psychic Seed, all the way, here we go, Trick Room, and that's game. I was like, so lost hope there, but forget the Psychic Seed boost, this makes Calyrex an absolute monster, so it's a really nice option uh, for these sort of situations where you think, okay, otherwise we'd be in a little bit of trouble. The high horsepower will be, should be enough now to take, to take Nihiligo down. Oh, unless you miss like that. Are you actually kidding? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Don't know what else I could have done. Don't know what else I could have done. Okay, well. Good game to my opponent, I guess. Good game. We shouldn't have lost that. <laughs> we shouldn't have lost that. High horsepower is the ass of all moves. I will say that. When this game decides it doesn't want you to win, you don't win. So, I mean, what can you do? Anyway, friends, we'll hop over now and we'll get into game two of today's episode. Okay, next up, we have Jamie playing a team of Incineroar, Tapacoco, Porygon 2, Groudon, Entai, and Venusaur. So, for a very heavy sun-looking team, you're going to have potentially Scarf on the Entai. You're going to have the Venusaur with the Chlorophyll taking advantage of the sun. And then predominantly going to be a Trick Room mode from the P2 and Groudon. I think, really, it's more preferable that we get our Trick Room up than my opponent here. Because both Calyrex and pretty much everything else... Uh, that we got are going to really benefit a lot more from the trick room than my opponent is going to be able to. I think Incineroar quite important for us here to allow us to uh, at least avoid 
um, sleep powder from the Venusaur, give us a way to not be knocked out by the end tide turn one and also give us the intimidate for the Groudon as well as a kind of a pivot out if we need it. I think we'll go Jellicent, Incineroar, um, Calyrex for sure, and I think Lorantis here. Um, stack Attacker could be good, but I feel like Lorantis can really punish the Incineroar. And if we can start getting those, like if we can get it on the field and start superpowering like really quickly, then it can really build the momentum up for us where my opponent's going to find it difficult to uh, to deal with for sure. So let's get into it and see what we can do in this first one against Jamie. Right, well, first time ever we've had, I think, including last episode... And the start of this one, two back-to-back -back losses on the channel for the first time in a long time. So, got to try and pull it around and get a win today with this one. We are going to see Entite and P2 come out for my opponent. Which is kind of fine. Can set up the Trick Room. Don't know if we want to though. P2 might go for it. Um, in a focus. What's the Entite going to do here? It's not really got... It's going to have... Mm, I don't know. May it snarl? I don't know. Is it going to snarl? Is it? Is it? Is it gonna snarl? What is the P2 plus? No, it's got nothing. It's nothing. Um, we could just parting shot out onto that slot. And we could potentially set the trick room up, to be honest. It's an option, for sure. Because the P2 might trick room as well. Trick room on a trick room. Potentially. I just never like playing those games, to be honest. Like, we really want to try and take advantage in Trick Room while we can, even though they can just reverse it for us, which would not be good. And we're kind of just wasting a turn, but if they don't Trick Room, then... Okay, P2 going to switch out. It's fine. Oh, dear. Wild Charge. Wildy Charge from the end time. Does it get Wild Charge? Does it get Wild Charge? I didn't realize it did. No, just snarl, which is super fine. Like, we'll take that all day, all day long, all day long. Yeah, all day. We'll just get the, the parting shot. And the next time we can just water spout and Glacial Lance. And that's going to be enough to clear the field. Well, is it going to be enough to clear the field? Maybe not. Maybe not. Are we bringing Lorandus in here? Nah, we'll bring Calyrex in. Let's bring Calyrex in. Let's bring Cali in. And get Cali up and running. So minus one water spout is not going to do a, a great amount of damage to the Entai. The other thing to worry about as well is like a Groudon switch in here for Tapu Koko, which could be like totally possible. Um, whereas where you would want to maybe go something like high horsepower, water spout, which would probably do a bit more damage. Because you can't see the anti. The other thing is, does the anti just switch out here, potentially to P2? But I think high horsepower, water spout should be enough to get the anti, should be. It does just switch out. Okay, we should have Glacial Lanced. I wonder if the Coco just protects in this in this situation. Might go after the Jellicent, but then it does open the door for us to get something like Lorantis onto the field. No protect from the Coco. The high horsepower not going to be doing that much damage, but we'll get a decently powered water spout off. Going to get some... Wow, it's a Solfest Coco, so we've got that. We know that. Bolt switch. Yeah. Jellicent able to take that, but... Not going to be able to stop the, the P2 reversing the trick room this next turn. Because I think Entai probably comes back onto the field now. It would make sense if the Entai did. No, it's Groudon. Mm, big bad Groudon. Okay, well. This isn't too bad. Uh, it's not brilliant. It's not brilliant, I will say that. Because... We want the Glacial Lance, but at the same time, I think what we'll do with Glacial Lance and we'll switch into Incineroar here. Because then the next turn we got the Fake Out Trick Room if we need to. And we get the Intimidate onto the Groudon, so the Heat Crash should knock us out. Hopefully. Because the P2 undoubtedly has the Trick Room in this position, I think. Groudon may just protect as well. 
which is all right, you know, if they do, okay. We're gonna see Entai come onto the field and then we go for the, oh no, it's Coco. What? What is going on here? What is happening? We're gonna see the trickery reverse regardless. Uh, I guess the, the, the Groudon switch out's nice because then you just get rid of, ooh, that's actually really good for us to not have, that's big for us to not knock out the Coco here. So that's perfect because now we just fake out the P2 and we trick room and then we can kind of win this game potentially. It's not going to be straightforward, like the Entai is going to be difficult to deal with. Um, but that huge crit onto the P2 makes this a lot more manageable now, like massively, way more manageable. So I can't think what I was going to, what I was to, trying to say. But, we're not in the worst spot. Because Coco not really going to be able to do very much damage. Yeah, it gets the dazzle off, but it's kind of alright. Because now we've got potentially a double a double knockout. Well, we have got a double knockout with Glacial Lance, which is huge, because that will put us to plus two. And that means it's going to be so easy to deal with whatever's kind of going to come in. And I think we'll probably switch into Lorantis here as well, because we kind of don't need Incineroar on the field at the minute. What happened? What happened? I don't know what happened. Let's see. Looks like things got knocked out or either that or things switched around. So, sorry, delivery guy arrived, had to go. So let's just assess what happened without me here. Um, Pokemon. No, why can I see? I oh, know they only have two left. So this is all right. We're still in trick room, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're plus two. So the Groudon's easy. So we can just glacier your lance and... And we could superpower and high horsepower. What have we got in the back as well? Oh, we got Incineroar. So we could bring Incineroar in and just high horsepower into the Entai. Yeah, I think that's probably a better idea. And then at least we get the Intimidate onto the Groudon. There's not too many turns of Sun left as well. So as long as the high horsepower hits here. Touch wood. Should do. And I don't expect the heat crash to take us down. That would put us to plus three. Yeah, that's enough. Heat crash. Are oh, they just rock sliding? Okay, that's fine. No, that's that's super fine. We don't mind that. No heat crash, or it looks like no heat crash. And now, yeah, the sun gone, and Glacial Land's going to be able to hand the ground on a new one. So, just parting shot here. I think they'll probably protect, or we'll just see the battle cancelled. No, we get to do it. So, here we go. Glacial Lance, bish, bash, bosh, pick up another win. I think it should have really been two wins today, but unfortunately high horsepower was a bit whiffy in that first game, but very good game to my opponent, and I have really enjoyed this team. Little bit of a shame that we didn't get to see the Lorantis, but very good game to Jamie there, and we will hop over now, friends, and remind you all of today's rental team. <laughs> friends, here is today's rental team. I hope if you try it out, you have a lot of fun with it. Big shout out to Pug Andrew. Thank you so much for sharing the team with us. Had a lot of fun with it today. The Jellison is always a favorite of mine, especially with the Ice Rider Color X. I think it complements it really nicely. Just one little shame is that we didn't really get to see the Lorantis today, which is a really cool Pokemon and something I really do enjoy playing around with. With, uh, especially in these restricted formats where it can really take advantage of trick room and uh, do some big damage if it is not checked so 
have fun with the team if you try it out definitely let me know down in the comment section below if you've got time and you have tried the team out for yourselves and again if you have got a rental team you'd like to see featured on the channel before we move into series 11 then do drop it down in the comment section or just drop me a dm on either twitter or discord probably the best places to do it and uh that's that friends have a great rest of your day great rest of your week and i will catch you all soon for another episode here on the channel so until then take care and bye bye